G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at the MiG-21 PFM. This is the Operation Winter Reward, and honestly, it is not a great plane. This particular plane has caused me a fair amount of pain, and I haven't actually been able to get any good games with it. So, for what I'll show you, it's basically the best that I can do with the little sanity that I have left. If you guys love MiG-21s, you can basically find a diecast variant or, or a diecast model of them in the link in the description below. You can also find other cool things like uh, Spitfires and Phantoms. I personally have the Hurricane Mark, I think it's the Mark IIc, and I have the F-35B from the RAF. Basically sort of like a first monoplane to current monoplane type thing. Uh, I intend to get more, but I don't have the space. Uh, these things are pretty good, and I do recommend them. They also go to supporting the channel, so if you guys would do that, that would be incredible. Uh, of course, you don't have to if you don't have the money, I really don't mind, but the option is there if you really want to. Now, onto the MiG-21 PFM. The MiG-21 PFM is basically a MiG-21F with some ground attack capabilities, a slightly better engine, a better radar, but a lot heavier. This particular plane also has the GSH 23mm cannon, which is basically the one that's found on the SMT, the MF, and the BIS. It does not have the NR 30 cannons, and personally, I'm starting to prefer the NR 30s over the GSH 23s. Don't get me wrong, they're fantastic cannons, they do a fair amount of damage, but the NR 30s, if you know how to aim them and you know where to place them, you can actually get better results overall. For me, the GSH-23 is a little bit slow and has a little bit of a poor muzzle velocity. So I, out of preference, prefer the uh, 23, the 30 millimeter cannons over the 23s. But for those of you that do like the 23s, you will, uh, it's one of the best things that you will find about this plane, honestly. This particular plane is not a strong plane at all. It sits at battle rating 10.0, so you will almost always see full up tiers. And when you do get a full down tier, you'll be up against things like the English Electric Lightning and uh, the F-100. You'll be up against things like the F-104 when you're at your own battle rating. Now, those things on its own would not really be a problem. But the fact this thing gets up tiered so much is extremely painful. Basically, think of it like you're jumping into a match uh, with a MiG-19 or with something like an F-104, uh, you'll understand the pain of those if you main those two particular planes, especially the F-104A or F-104C. These particular planes really don't stand a chance. Now, the MiG-21 PFM does not have RWR, and this makes it extremely painful to play when you're coming up against things like Phantoms, because these things will sneak up behind you, especially with the way that the spotting system has been behaving lately. And you'll find that the PFM is really one of the sort of lower down on the food chain type planes in an up tier. In a down tier, you'll find that you're just sort of an average Joe, and this makes me think that the plane should be put down to 9.7. The PFM is basically the energy version of the MiG-21, and what I mean by that is it is the type of plane that you just sort of pull energy with rather than turn fight against things like your F-100s and F-11s, uh, but you'll see sort of the dogfighting capability against those in the next type of battle. This particular match sort of shows you're not really much. You're kind of bottom of the food chain. I managed to get a critical hit on that uh, F4E, but it gets yoinked by a MiG-21, I believe. Unfortunate news for me, because this is like some of the only stuff that I will end up getting. This particular plane doesn't really have the oomph that I see on the MiG-21 SMT or the BIS, and that kind of leaves a bit to be desired. I don't really have many positive things to say about this plane, unfortunately. It's really not a particularly strong vehicle. It is a nice little gimmick, it is a MiG-21, but honestly, I, would, I wouldn't touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. If I had my time again, I wouldn't have played it at all, honestly. This thing is really, really painful and absolutely stripped the sanity out of me. Now, moving on to this particular match, I'm getting run down by some A7s and this isn't really fun, but I can outrun them no problem. This thing has plenty of power over the A7 and it does have an afterburner, which means that you will have superior uh, performance at altitude. And you can see that I'm absolutely blitzing away from even the Harriers, which have a fair amount of acceleration. Now, 
basically out of nowhere appears an F100, which kind of throws me off. So my first instinct to do is to uh, dogfight, and then an F11 appears, and normally, I think in a 1v1 situation, I would probably be able to outturn them. I kind of have the uh, thrust, I kind of have the AOA, and I can basically do it as long as he doesn't sort of ride his air brake all the way down, and he's not, because he's clearly closing the distance. You can see it quite quickly. I pop out my air brake and I turn my afterburner off in order to cut as much energy as possible, and you can see that I can just fly outside of his specs. I think this particular matchup between the F100 and the MiG-21 PFM actually goes quite well. Um, and the F-11F decides he wants to join the fray, which means that I have a 2v1 situation. Now this is really, really bad for me, and is really, really bad practice in general. Don't get yourself into 2v1s, but in this particular case here, I'm sort of going to show you what it can do. Now it is a fairly decent dogfighter, because it is a MiG-21. It has fairly good low speed capabilities. It doesn't have very good low speed energy capabilities though. It, it does hold on to a little bit more than the MiG-21F, but remember it still is a MiG-21. It does bleed a lot of speed in turns and you have to keep that in mind. Note, note here that uh, I'm starting to lose a fair bit of altitude in the turn and this is basically the thing that is going to result in my demise. Remember that this plane has not been out for very long and I am sort of struggling to keep this thing up. You can see that this particular moment here is kind of where I lose it. I'm coming in really close to the ground and I've got my wings a little bit too turned and I managed to bonk myself into the ground. Moving on to the next particular match, I have an AV8A problem and I think that's an AV8C problem as well. Notice here how I can sort of outturn them, but the AV8s do have that one little ace up their sleeve where they can bleed a lot of speed in a single turn. This particular AV-8 decides that he wants to fly in a straight line, which is prime targeting for me. I'm going to send a missile, not quite, there it goes, sending the missile, and unfortunately it decides to track the Hunter. Oh boy, I cannot catch a break in this plane, at all. <laughs> it's just it's just not my, not my plane, I think, ladies and gents. So this particular match is a full down tier, which means that I'm facing things, oh actually it's not a full down tier, it's almost a full up tier where I'm facing things like the F4E. I have played this plane in what I would consider a relative down tier, uh, facing things like uh, 9.3 Sabres, and honestly it performs kind of like a MiG-21 in these situations, except your turn rate is not quite as good. So that does leave you a little bit less able to do dogfighting than you would in the MiG-21F. Personally, I would see this thing as a pretty okay 9.7, kind of like the MiG-21F, uh, but you've got to remember that this particular plane has very limited weapons capabilities and it has fairly sort of chonky performance. It does have a lot of acceleration, but it does trade that for what I would consider wing loading or its ability for low speed handling um, and sort of turn rate in general, in fact. You can see F104C is more than able to sort of keep pace with me and I think it's... I would, I would honestly rate it as slightly better. It performs about the same in terms of level flight speed, but in terms of its weapons capabilities, I would rate it a little bit better since it has that uh, Vulcan cannon, which gives it a little bit more range and a little bit more uh, potency. Now, in this particular case, you would probably expect a MiG-21 to, to kind of come out on top, but remember that at this particular tier, you're starting to see weapons take over as your main sort of source of, uh, sorry, your weapons making the plane, rather, more than the actual performance of the plane. And this particular plane, I was hoping that it had R60s, but unfortunately, I, I don't know if it did in real life, I don't know if it just doesn't in-game because reasons, uh, but this particular plane does not get R60s in War Thunder, and that is the most important thing to take away. You are going to be using the R3s, and for some reason on this plane, I'm not really sure if it's just an uh, if it's just a PFM issue, or if it's an issue with the R3s in general. But I'm pretty sure they have like a 1 or 1.5 G tolerance off the rails at the moment, which means that you basically have to be perfectly still in order to launch an R3, which gives you very limited tracking capabilities. Whereas something with the AIM-9 like along the lines of the M9B, you do have a lot more opportunity to get sort of maneuvery type kills with that thing. I've had a lot of fun with the M9Bs actually on the Buccaneer and you guys have probably seen that video. But 
The PFM unfortunately doesn't get that opportunity. It kind of needs to be still off the rails. So let's look on the positive side. How can you actually use this thing? Well, unfortunately, you can only use it as bait. That is basically where the PFM sits at the moment. The flares carried by the F4E and uh, the F104G, I think it is. One of, one of the F104Gs basically makes the weapon systems useless on this plane because the F4E can straight line you without a problem. Uh, it's a lot faster, it has better weapons in every sense of the word, uh, and it just leaves the PFM to sort of sit there and suffer. Now, you might be thinking, well, if this is a multi-role plane, then surely it would have fairly decent ground capability. I mean, at least look on the bright side, I can dodge an R, not an R60, but an AIM-9J. Not too bad, to be honest, but any other plane, any other MiG-21 can basically do the same thing. I really don't see this thing as being competitive at all. Even in the ground capability, like I was just saying, this particular plane carries the two, I think it's the KH-66, basically the little sack loss missile that you get on the Yak-38, you get that exact same missile on the uh, MiG-21 PFM. Now, the Yak-38 is a regulatory vehicle, it's 9.7, it is lower battle rating, it also gets better missiles by the way, and has a comparable straight line speed at sea level, obviously not the same climb rate, obviously not the same uh, speed at uh, altitude, but the Yak-38, in my opinion, is a better plane than the MiG-21 PFM. Not only that, but with the MiG-21 PFM, you do get yourself a couple of Tiny Ivans. However, you can basically get four Tiny Ivans on the Su-7 and the Yak-38 as well. So I wouldn't even consider this thing for ground attack, especially not being a higher battle rating than the Su-7 and the Su-7 BKL, which sits at 10.0 with the same battle rating as this thing, has six. I don't really know where that R3R, R3R, oh, R3R, R3S went, but that's okay because I'm going to finish this Mirage with some guns. You can see that my kill all of a sudden gets yoinked which is kind of the MiG-21 PFM experience in a nutshell. So I'm going to choose this F4E, which is going to be my next meal. He's popping some flares, and I managed to get a kill. But unfortunately, someone shoots out my tail control, either with guns or with a missile, by a bit of friendly fire. And that's basically it for me for this particular match. The MiG-21 PFM, for me, has been extremely stressful to play. It's not fun, I would not recommend it at all, and I'm very, very sorry that this video has come out negative. I don't feel strongly, I feel strongly negative about this plane uh, just because of its performance and because of its battle rating. I would highly suggest that it goes to 9.7 in order for the plane to become a little bit more competitive. There are better options at 9.3 and at 9.7 for CAS, so I wouldn't even consider it in a CAS role. Anyway, ladies and gents, this is a MiG-21 PFM. It's... Pretty sad, but at least it's unique. At least it's something that is uh, an event vehicle. You can probably sell it on the Gaijin market. I'm going to guess that it's going to go for about 20, 20 Gaijin coin at tops. Um, but of course, as soon as you get the opportunity to sell it, try and sell it as high as possible. Because this particular plane, you are probably going to get rid of it very, very quickly. Anyway, ladies and gents, I'm really sorry that this video had to be so negative. Uh, but hey, at least I get a Hot Tracks trophy, so... <laughs> Maybe something there is made up for. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about this plane when you get your hands on it. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.